I own So Social Marketing based in Oma and uh, it's just a small one-man band and I do uh, mainly people's social media content but I do um, website and uh, writing content for websites, SEO, um, press releases, PR, anything, anything to do with um, online marketing but mainly it's social media. So um, up until... Uh, up until two years ago, I used to work for a company in Cookstown, a manufacturing company, and I was there for six years, but I also had so social um, as a sideline. So, oh, there's somebody looking in there, sorry. Um, hi, guys. Now, they've got their sound turned off, so that's okay. So, um, you didn't miss anything, guys. I'm just literally on the first slide. So um, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and jump in. But if you want to just keep yourself muted um, in case you have any um, people walk in or kids or anything, that's no problem at all. I totally understand. So, um, yeah, so I used to work for um, a company in Cookstown where we won several different awards, which are listed here. Um, best online social media campaign. Um, best B2B campaign at the Danny Awards and then one of my clients two years ago McBride Spar uh, won a digital engagement award at the Retail Industry Awards so that's just a bit of background about who I am and um, how I can help you guys today so I'll just go to the next slide oh. all right so are you able to see this okay? Because I can see your faces down. Um, oh, here, I, I, there, I can see this. You probably can see this a bit better now, okay? So um, the workshop overview is staying connected, obviously, um, getting um, social media right, and what sort of tools that you can use um, to, to, to do that. So obviously, there's a lot of people working from home, as you know. So this is just um, an interesting quote that I got um, online from the drum. As people travel less and work from home more, we also expect to see mobile and social opportunities increase. Research by Global Web, Web Index found that we are seeing a huge increase in people checking social media across all demographics. Um, and those are the, a list of the different demographics. Um, this is obviously because, well, people aren't working in an office environment where their bosses are keeping the tight eye on them. Um, but also people are checking the news a lot more often given the circumstances. So there is a massive opportunity there um, for businesses and it's just making sure that you're going about it the right way. So I'm going to just give you some um, advice. So the current um, COVID-19 landscape um, People are, are obviously, their, their feelings, you know, their feelings are affected. Um, there's a lot of fear, panic and distress. Um, these are the general feelings of not just Northern Ireland, but obviously the whole world. Um, it's not really uh, business as usual, as you know, a lot of shops and stores have closed. Um, but it's, it's now a time for brands to reassure customers that, that they are there for them and engage with them in a different way that they will remember forever. Um, this is an opportunity for businesses to build relationships with their audiences that didn't exist before. Um, so the actions required. So you need, we need to be, we need to be right. We need to be, we need to have the right tone of voice when we're talking to our customers. And I will show you some examples of that later on, um, which I have done for uh, one of my clients. Yes, we need humor, but it can't be frivolous. Um, we need to get people talking, but it can't generate fear or further anxiety. We need to walk a very fine line as I, who am an experienced digital marketeer, have um, experienced in this past two weeks with social media that we have um, been running um, on people's plat on businesses' platforms. We've had some back um, backlash, which I will show you and explain. So it's trying to get that tone right um, or, you know, you, you risk losing, um, you know, your fans on online. So... Uh, a little summary. Um, we uh, the greatest toll of COVID nineteen is emotional and it's creating anxiety due to isolation, loneliness, loss of control, job insecurity, and fear, and what that all means to the future. But as a brand, addressing your audience at this time means you have a very clear plan of what you um, you need to have a very clear plan of what you will say and how you will say it. So today we're going to talk about these two things and the place where um, you can say that. So staying connected, 
the good news is that amongst all of those feelings of anxiety, um, we're, we're seeing some positive behaviours amongst our audience. So people, I don't know about you, but I have certainly, people are starting to recenter themselves. They have a renewed focus and appreciation for who and what's important, uh, what the important things are in life. A positive arising out of this event is the opportunity to slow down and put life into perspective. People are reconnecting with each other, old friends, family, um, and stronger. There's a stronger feeling of a of a global community. There's a strong sense of solidarity, but um, being felt at many levels. Like I don't know about you, but like my family, different not my immediate family, but like cousins and relatives are all setting up WhatsApp groups and we're all trying to, um, everybody's on video calls and there's a lot, people are talking a lot more to each other, even though they're not face to face. Um, Cause there's a lot more time for that. Uh, and renewing, people are using the extra time um, by starting or returning to hobbies such as cooking, playing an instrument, um, crafting, exercising, gardening, things like that there. Uh, again, an example of that is I've never baked anything in my entire life. And the first week of isolation, I purchased stuff to make scones with my four-year-old daughter. And it was brilliant, like, because we've never, ever done anything like that before. So um, people are finding um, new, different, or returning to things that they've done before. So, um, and they are spending lots of time online. So this is what's relevant for you as a business owner. So I'm going to talk about, um, I don't know if you've heard about this before, but I'm going to talk about brand pillars. So brand pillars um, are the point that set your company apart from competitors. You want to sum up the outlook on things that matter to you most, to most to your customers and where that naturally fits and reinforces those ideas and, and reinforce those into the content that ideas into the content that you produce. So it's important to Yes, if you sell if you sell a product in your say you have um, a, a a shop that sells clothes, um, makeup, um, various items like that, um, it's finding what's in that that you know that is relevant to your brand and how you can portray that um, in a in a way that doesn't sound like you're trying to sell a hard sale if that makes sense. So I know a lady who. Um, has a shop in Derry and she sells clothes, she sells children's games, she sells giftware. It's like a haberdashery store essentially. And she started to focus now on selling the children's gift, uh, children's like um, art activities and things like that there. And she's seen a massive uplift um, in sales online due to um, coming on her Instagram stories and talking about that sort of product whereas traditionally she'd be on talking about clothes so it's just re reshifting and having a refocus on um, what's relevant to you know what's happening out there at the minute so yeah what does this mean for the brand for your brand for you or you as your brand um, we now have the chance to speak to our customers in a helpful and engaging way we now know that they they're that is well, excuse me we now know that from these three key behaviorisms fall some excellent themes that brand pillars can layer up to so with the recentering side of things i mentioned um like well-being and physical mental and even even financial um it's a great time for brands to offer advice on these things so if you are like a gym for example i think there is somebody on here that owns a gym um i miss the gym a lot and um, I know that our gym has set up a private group on Facebook where different workouts and stuff are being uploaded and all the members are there and there's good communication with each other. And um, it's just an interest in a different format for us to communicate through. So um, if there's different examples of things that you have found that would work well for your business, get, the, get them out there, like meditation apps that you, have, that you find useful, free yoga tutorials, advice on saving money even um, during COVID-19. And another aspect is the reconnecting. So like, like I said, through like board games, coloring and activities, books, brands can chime in with opinions and thought leadership on things to do at home with the kids or if you don't have any children, if you are living at home on your own or with your partner. You can talk to your audience as if they are your friend offering advice maybe it's something as simple as sending out free printables of your, you know, like if you, 
uh, for example, I think there's a lady on here maybe, or somebody who has a coffee shop. So maybe you could do up the likes of uh, men or, you know, how to like bake at home or how to like make sandwiches at home, like creative ideas along those lines, design your own menu, things that kids can get involved with that you have branded and with your logo and post that out, you know, take orders for that um, from parents online and get that out to children um, within the community. Um, because that's what they're that's what kids are doing now they're loving the coloring in aspect and the arts and crafts so the sense of renewing then can your product business or brand or general um, or you know general feelings help a customer with uh, try something new if, yeah of course it can banks are handing out fitness advice using chairs I don't know if anybody has seen that but um, so obviously traditionally banks would be promoting mortgages and bank accounts and um, things like that there. Whereas now they're doing blog posts and they're creating content on their social media about how um, to stay fit whilst you're working from home in your, in your own chair. So technically um, the old rules are dead and the floodgates are open. Um, and now is the time to try out whatever you want. So, activating um, these pillars on social, on, on social, where to start with Facebook. So anybody that uses Facebook, um, either personally or for their business, will know that it's the home of the most engaging content. Um, people often say to me, oh, I don't use Facebook anymore. Um, Facebook's a dead duck for me. I don't get much of a response, but Facebook is still the number one social media platform um, across the world. Um, so use Facebook for asking questions, going live, using video content, starting conversations, polls, giving advice, just general things like that there where you want people then to comment on your posts, um, like create a thread essentially, if that makes sense. And um, as the more people that comment on your post, the more engaging it becomes, the more visibility it has within the Facebook community. And the long-term effects of that then can be seen with your brand, through your brand awareness. So don't use Facebook guys for long forms of written content and, and negative news. Do not use Facebook if you don't intend to man it um, from a community management point of view. So that's a fancy term. If you have a marketing team, if you're lucky enough to have a marketing team, you probably have somebody managing your Facebook. But if it's you, if you're a sole trader and you're working for yourself, um, it can be hard to get the time to sit down and manage your social media. But in times like this, it's it's pivotal that you are replying to people and answering questions back because um, people are get people get frustrated easily and it's not a place to post and just leave. So one of the pages that I manage, um, we've had several, like we wouldn't have many questions on there at all, but since this kicked off, we've had loads of people message the page querying about home deliveries and can food be delivered? Can you pay for it over the phone? So I have to keep a tight eye on that every day now because that's the sort of things that people are looking for. Um, they don't want to leave the house and they want their groceries delivered and it's been able to change the business like they've had to change the business significantly to be able to cater for these um people who now don't want to come out of the community come out of their house to go into their shop so it's important yeah to keep post anything on your social media but keep a tight eye on what people are saying because people are feeling very sensitive um at the minute which i will show which i'll give you an example of so um i'll actually just do that now just bear with me. So I'll just give you an example. We, I'm, I'll use um, McBride's bar. So this is a client that I would do social for. And we had posted, um, a few weeks ago, we posted about the, um, you know, the whole toilet roll thing that everybody was, everybody was built, buying up toilet roll and it was just madness. So we wanted to inform our, our customers that we had um, toilet roll available in a certain store. Now, um, the backlash of that was immense, where, where people actually were positive and saying, thank you for letting us know. Um, we also had a few people come on and say some quite negative things. So I'm just going to give you an example. So after that, we decided to change the strategy altogether, which I will give examples of after. I just want to try and find, it shouldn't be too hard to find because we haven't been posting much since this, so just bear with me. It's just a wee bit slow. Um, 
I hope these are all still there and you haven't fallen asleep yet. <laughs> um, well, that's one that we put up because we just uh, we wanted to share a bit, a little bit of color. But um, if I can just, we've since changed the strategy. We've we've launched this here, so um, we put up a post about the toilet roll. Where is it? Don't tell me it's been deleted. Um, look at um. People were being, very, this was the, the very first stage of the isolation. People were feeling very sensitive. Um, still alone. Here's me, I thought it wasn't that far away, but I didn't realize we've actually done quite a few posts on, you know, cu like customer notices about time, opening times and stuff. So um, I'll be able to, there's my scones that we made. Um, <laughs> uh, Where is this? Here. So this is the post that I'm telling you about. So it says just simply, our Japan store is restocked and ready for the local community. And one of the managers sent this in and I thought, okay, we'll put this up. We don't want to be pushing a hard sale, but we just want to talk about how it was um, beneficial for the, the customers to know. And then a lot of people um, perhaps encourage responsible shopping rather than advertising toilet roll. Um, does this mean you only want the local community um, to shop with you? It was just, it was a bit of a disaster. So that's when we just decided then to change um, completely, like for a while as we had been doing posts like that for quite a while, we decided, no, we're not going to do anything more like that. Um, and I will talk about what we did then um, since that in the slides, which I'll explain to you in, in a moment. And just checking how we are for time. Okay, cool. So um, Instagram. I don't know about you, but I love Instagram. And um, so how do you activate the, your, your pillars on social um, with Instagram? So Instagram is the home of brand love. Um, if you use Instagram, use it for Instagram stories, use it for polls, use it for building brand love in the form of the double tap. So if anybody uses Instagram here, will know what that means. Basically tapping on um, a grid post and like loving it with a heart. Um, it's visually pleasing content and um, there's long format video content as well that can be posted live on Instagram tel TV channel if relevant. Guys, do not use Instagram for um, posts um, in the news feed that encourages conversations such as questions. Um, Instagram behavior usually revolves around tagging and double tapping for likes or loves. So it's not a platform that users would chat on, um, whereas Facebook would be. So um, just keep that in mind whenever you are posting on your Instagram over the next while. And anybody here that uses LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a professional um, social media platform for businesses and um, people, just me and you, to use um, on a professional level. So it's where you upload your CV. It's where your business can engage on a professional level with um, potential clients. So it's the home of business to business, essentially. Um, use LinkedIn for business to business communications, um, people, and, people and culture updates, general business information about your business in the wake of COVID-19. Like, don't use it LinkedIn for consumer communications. So what I would be posting on Facebook, if I, McBride's bar that I use an example of um, they don't have a LinkedIn page but if they did I wouldn't be posting about toilet roll and I wouldn't be posting about their offers it would be more about the business side of the business if that makes sense so if anybody is on LinkedIn just keep that in mind so um, Twitter anybody uses Twitter here I used to use Twitter all the time and it kind of um turned into a dead duck but it's seen a revival in the last year or so so a lot of people at the present minute are using twitter obviously for use news sorry so twitter is, is the home of news and information use twitter for b2b or b2c communication e example opening hours general business information customer service um announcements but you may have seen that a lot of people are tuning into Twitter now to follow the likes of doctors and nurses in the NHS that are on the front line um, 
fighting COVID-19. So there's been a huge influx of people coming back to Twitter to follow these guys and their with their daily updates. So it's an interesting um it's been an interesting um spike in usership on Twitter. Do not use Twitter for um and don't do not use Twitter for content in the form of um images, videos or other sorts of media. Um Twitter also requires a, a dedicated somebody replying to people. If you don't have that person or you don't have the time yourself, don't use this channel because Twitter can tweets can easily go um, viral in a in in a very quick sh in a very short space of time. So just be warned or just be wary of um, what way you want to use Twitter if you are going to be using it for your business. So tone of voice. So tone of voice is is vitally important, which we have now come to notice. Um, it's never been more important to get your tone of voice right. Um, we are warned in mourning. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we are a world in mourning of our old lives. We're adapting to the new normal and no one has any certainty on when it will all end. So here's a guide to help you on your tone of voice. Maybe, maybe you used to be, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll just log out of Facebook here, bear with me. Shut that down because I need to keep some of the. I want to show you the video, um, how to use this video tool after, so I'll just keep that wee window open. So, here's a guide to help you on tone of voice. Maybe you should, um, maybe you used to use some or all of the below, um, types of tone of voice. Maybe you're funny, optimistic, energized, quirky. Um, now you need to adapt and become more lighthearted, um, more realistic but positive more gentle but also positive and still be quirky and upbeat but tone it down just a bit if you used to be more if your business had a more serious and a corporate authoritative tone of voice change your tone to a more human yet informative um tone of voice if that makes sense um i'm not sure i'm, I'm sure if you guys um want access to these slides i can um send you these after if you want to refer back to them Mm -hmm. so, so you're not like taking loads of notes and getting a sore hand in the middle of all this. Um, so do's and don'ts, just an overview. Be active. Stats from stat, which this has surprised me actually. Stats from Twitter have shown that a COVID-19 related tweet um, is sent out every 45 milliseconds with, with coronavirus emerging as the second most used hashtag of 2020. The first most used hashtag I think was when Trump was um, in trouble there recently so uh, now is not the time to be silent but it is also the time for measured and informative communication. Be human at a time when your customers will remember your behavior ensure you're acting in a, in a humane way so I don't know about you guys but um, I would follow a lot of influencers on Instagram and um, in the past now I've unfollowed a lot of people because a lot of influencers are still just doing what are still just doing what they were doing trying to sell things and and I suppose trying to be normal yes but people aren't interested in swipe up for 10% off this that and the other for for, for things that aren't relevant Google um, trends has seen a massive increase in people searching for there is a graph I I I didn't put it into the slides, but there is a graph. Um, so for basic necessities has spiked massively and people looking for luxury items has decreased massively. So it's just um it's just bearing this in mind. So somebody's looking on actually. Sorry. So um yeah. So at a time when your customers will remember your behavior, ensure that you're acting in a humane way. Um, lots of brands are seeing backlashes um, from just being normal and trying to get you to buy things and posting up normal sales. And um, a lot of people are, are seeing like a lot of abuse online for doing that. So um, because we've never experienced this before, so marketing teams need to find what's right. Um, for these businesses so be there for your customer answer the questions on social media engage with them and communicate with them on a personal level like you've never done before um and down the line so what you might think well what's the point in doing this um i'm not going to get any sales from this but after this is all over 
who, which brand will be remembered? Will it be your brand or will it be the brand, you know, will it be your brand that was offering something alternative to the brand that kept pushing sales, sales, sales um, during this whole COVID-19 that we're all experiencing? Just checking how we are for time. Okay, no. So tone of voice, this is just some more bullet points, uh, more food for thought. Maybe your brand voice is typ typically super cheeky and free spirited, but don't overcorrect um, so much and write it in such a Solomon or dire tone. Like, so if you like, just don't be too drastic in your change of tone. This will increase the stress of, our, of your audience and reduce engagement. Um, it's not the time to be funny um, if you're talking specifically about the virus. So I know that um, over the last, I'd say eight weeks or so, um, everybody has seen um, different things, different memes and different things going about. Sorry, I'm just getting my charger. Um, have seen funny things and oh, everybody's laughed and joked about the virus before it actually came here to Northern Ireland and, and UK. But now is not the time to be funny about it. Um, empathy is your best tool. Don't make light of the seriousness of the situation. Ask yourselves these questions before you post anything. Is my tone of voice helpful? Does my post sound like it came from a human? Does this post layer up to a relevant content pillar that is in line with the social media strategy that you have for COVID-19? So um, online tools, um, Facebook Live. Um, traditionally, like when Facebook Live came out, a lot of people used it and then it kind of sort of died off because a lot of people have moved to Instagram stories. But um, Facebook Live is still, um, is, is now a lot of people are using it. It's brilliant. If you have children, I have streamed, I've, I've joined, um, people are now having watch parties on Facebook Live. So I joined what was called a watch party on Saturday um, for the child. There was a lady on reading storybooks. So there was a lady sitting in some business. I don't know what the business was called, but um, just to get engagement, there were thousands and thousands of people online watching this woman read um, books. So whenever I went on to Facebook Live um, and I went on, I was able to invite all my friends that I know that have children of the same age onto this Facebook Live stream. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of brands are jumping on and doing Facebook Live free, like free workouts. They're doing Facebook Live book reading. They're doing Facebook Live baby sensory. They're doing Facebook Live like PE classes. Um, it's been really powerful um, since we all have went into isolation. So um, use Facebook Live on a phone, obviously, to broadcast to your page, group, profile, or if you're having an event, but obviously you won't be unless it's in your house. Um, using, you know, it can be downloaded on I, um, Android, um, Facebook app, obviously, um, iOS and Android. You, um, that's just showing you how to use Facebook Live, navigate to the page um, or the event that you want to stream from and tap the live button at the bottom. It's very, very easy to do. And then you start live video. Just be conscious that you actually, um, that you are live. Some people go live before they realize that they're live and then there could be some bloopers. So just make sure, uh, and make sure that when you finish your broadcast, you click end and you're still not live streaming <laughs> to all your followers, because that would be awkward. So um, online Instagram tools, Facebook's, or sorry, Instagram stories. So Facebook own Instagram, if anybody doesn't know, and anything that you, if you have Instagram stories for your business and you have it connected to your Facebook page, business page, your Instagram stories will automatically show on your Facebook stories. And if you haven't already done that, please, please do that because a lot of people don't realize that they can be synced. And it just means you're getting extra views over on Facebook synced from your, from your Instagram page. And it is, it is really um, easy to set up. So um, Facebook, sorry. sorry. Oh. Um, okay, look, sorry. Um, in short, uh, stories allow um, users to create a feed of sequential um, content that disappears within 24 hours of being posted. Story content can either be static fo photos or video or, you know, videos um, created in, like as a boomerang. And I don't know if anybody, anybody uses Netflix, but they've got a great, um, they've got a great thing that they're doing on their stories now at the minute, um, personalized way of communicating with, with their audience. So you can see over here on the right hand side, a screenshot from, um, taken from Netflix. It says, um, I want to help you find something to watch this weekend. What mood are you in? So send me an emoji for the mood that you, um, a mood-based recommendation. So say you typed in there like a laughing emoji 
and send it to Netflix, they would then set you, send you automated content of like comedy films or programs that would be suitable for you to watch because you're feeling in a happy mood. If you're feeling in a, you know, a, a love heart, they might give, send you like romantic videos to watch. So these are just bits of engaging content that I've come across um, online. And um, it's a very good idea um, to engage with your um, audience like this. So stories keep people up to date and they do disappear after 24 hours. But if you um, navigate into your archive on Instagram stories, you will see your, you as a business owner will see all your stories that you've ever posted. And it's a good idea to create highlights based around the content that you have posted um, previously. So say you are a coffee shop or a cafe or a restaurant and your shop, your coffee shop or restaurant is shut. Um, well, you could be doing things like from home on Instagram stories, like teaching people how to how to bake, how to make um, a curry. And these will disappear after 24 hours, but you can create them you can make a highlight of them afterwards, which is great content that'll always be there and you can reuse. So um, Instagram stories is brilliant. Um, so this is a bit more personal to me. I don't know if anybody, let me see if I'll just, um, if anybody has heard of this, you can jump on and tell me that you have, but some of you might not have. So online tools, um, Facebook groups. So I have, it's a fun and creative way to engage with your fans in a different way than your Facebook page. So setting up a private group or a public group um, is really is really good at this time. Like I said, for a gym, for example, if you if you do own a gym, this is a good way of um, reaching out to your customers or your um, members. With Facebook groups, businesses can have a real conversation with their audience, um, gaining customer insight and market research possibilities. For entrepreneurs, groups are a way to demonstrate thought leadership and provide value to potential customers. So last week or a week and a half ago, so this is where I wanted to ask you, has anybody of you heard on the news or seen anything about um, people um, making scrubs in Northern Ireland or searching for scrubs in Northern Ireland? Does it ring a bell? Probably, maybe not, but anyway. So I set up a, um, a relative of mine um, works in the hospital and didn't have any scrubs for their next shift and put it into the family chat and I thought this was terrible um, couldn't believe it so I put out a request on my personal page about um, looking for scrubs if anybody had any that they didn't use anymore you know or any dentists that were closed down reaching out to dentists or people that do like aesthetics and stuff like that there I had a massive response and I had loads of secondhand scrubs. I was driving around the country, and this is a week and a half ago, um, driving around the country looking for people to donate me clothes for the nurses and doctors. As you can see, my washing line over here in this picture. And um, it's actually went viral. So I then set up a private group on Facebook and I have all of Northern Ireland sewing scrubs. There is 4,000 people. This, this group was set up less than a week ago and we now have 4,000 people across Northern Ireland sewing scrubs. We've raised nearly £25,000 um, in which we are buying fabric and distributing it out to people in loads of different areas across Northern Ireland. It has just went massive. I had Channel 4 News on the phone to me yesterday um, and <laughs> This is, and by the way, this is an, a non-intentional um, viral campaign. This is something that I just wanted to do for a family member and it's just spiraled. Loads of people wanted to help. So that's an example of how you can use a face group, Facebook group, if anybody can sew. Um, um, yes, yeah, so that group, yeah, we now have 25,000 pounds in Northern Ireland and um, all the different locations across Northern Ireland are being given fabric and then people can go and collect the fabric from one location because of social distancing measures and hygiene and all that there. So um, it's just taken off massively and we have had at my front door I have boxes of scrubs and people coming and just collecting bags outside my door. Nurses and doctors, GPs, community workers and um, anybody that's working on the front line there's a chance that they can um, get COVID-19 have been coming to my house and lifting scrubs so it's completely um, it's blowing me away but it's very hard to manage at this stage so I just wanted to show you that as an example of um, how you can use a Facebook group 
um, obviously not for that purpose, but something similar. And I'll just show you some. So this is literally in the, I only set this page up on, so I set this, it's saying that it's pulling in for the last 28 days, but obviously I haven't. So I set this group up around, must have been the 20, the 20, 25th, say, of March. So literally last week or a week and a half ago, and look at the amount of, look at the reach um, that we have received. Um, we have, there's 3,222 members within the group and um the engagement on it is massive and the engagement on my instagram as well has went through the roof as well just people um looking to sew and looking to help out and we're taking orders from hospitals all like it's nobody's getting paid for this this is completely voluntary by the way um and we're we're getting orders from hospitals begging for um scrubs so um it's very it's a very interesting time <laughs> Um, this is just some of the coverage that we've um, received. Um, this is the girl in Belfast who is heading up the Belfast group now. Um, and yeah, so the Belfast Telegraph covered it. Um, Belfast Live have covered it. And this is a local, uh, my local newspaper, they've covered it. Um, loads of business, loads of um, news channels online have picked it up as well. And then it'll be on the news again tonight. So it just shows you how quickly things, how you can do something. Like I, I'm still working. I still have my own business that I have um, customers and clients needs to fulfill. And um, I'm two small children, but I'm doing this because it feels good and it's given something back. And yeah, um, there's a, there's obviously a need for it. So um, thinking about something, you know, outside the business, a lot of businesses that have restaurants and things would have had a lot of food in their fridges and freezers and they've decided to cook it all off and give it, donate it out to like homeless um, people who are maybe um, vulnerable, living on their own. Um, I've, there's a place outside Oma that have done that and they've had loads, loads and loads and loads of engagement and loads of views on their social media. So it's thinking about what you can do maybe to give, um, to change it around a bit and maybe give back because at the end of the day, we aren't, I know that I'm not working to my full capacity, but a lot of people aren't working now, unfortunately, and they have a bit of time to spare. So it's nice to do something maybe a little bit different. So um, this was an example I told you about McBride Spa. So McBride Spa, we had a bit of a backlash over the, the toilet roll saga. So I came up with the idea, I said to the owner, I says, why don't we start engaging with the community? We have 8,000 um, fans on there. Why don't we reach out and ask them to send in their videos of adults and kids trying to beat the boredom at home? So we put up an ad on their Facebook page asking for people to send in videos. And we've had an influx of videos of the local community sending in their children so for example on the left hand side we have Ronan and Eve they did an art attack challenge then we had the um, Ethan and Kelly um, on this side doing their own talent show we've had people doing their football skills we've had people send in oh we've had people send in lo loads of different videos we're only starting to get get out now but as you can see like okay there's not massive there's maybe 1100 people reached you know there's 14 people have liked it or you know um but it's getting engagement and it's it's showing a different side to the brand that they're not they're not wanting to push sales and they're not wanting to push um different things on you um that relevant you know to COVID-19 we want people to know that we are still there and we're still open but here's something different from us that you can that, that your whole family can get involved with so I just want to show you, um, what time is it? Just check the time. Okay, good enough. Um, so we have, I use, I don't know if anybody uses this, but I can never pronounce it. Is it Magisto or Magisto? Um, I use Magisto and it's an online video editing app with a web, with an, it, it's an online video editing tool and it also has an app. So I can use it on my mobile phone and I can use it on the computer, which is what I really, really like about it compared to other ones. So I'm just going to give you a little demo of it here. Okay. So there is a free version like most, like most things there are free versions, but I've, I pay for this one 
and I pay um, $17.99 a month, which is kind of expensive, but um, I do, 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 do quite a lot of videos. So I'm just going to show you an example of one that I created. Now, I am not a graphic designer. I am not a video editing person. Um, I just thought I just use it to help my clients as much as I can. And we created this one for a client that has a beauty, no, sorry, she's not a beauty salon. She does um, holistic treatments. So she invited me in um, and we um, did some treatments and took some pictures and I um, put this little video together for her. So it's 51 seconds. So it's suitable for Instagram grid and it's also suitable for Facebook. And it's, um, I'll just show you how it looks really, prof it looks professional um, and it was quite easy to do. The quality is better when it's downloaded, by the way, it's not as grainy. and then the logo and the contact details in there. So it's really easy to use. So you just go in and um, you go to create a video. You, again, you can do this on your phone. Um, you can upload your media that, or you know, upload your pictures or whatever um, content that you want from your desktop, if you have images or video content. Um, I'm just gonna go in here and use some that I've already used before, for example. So um, I'm trying to find one that would be of use. So you just pull in, um, so this is a, a guy that I do, I do some work for a dentist. So you just go add, 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 and exit out of that. And then all your little images come up here. You go to editing style and you can have a little run through. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to turn that down because it's a bit loud. So you can, there's loads of different styles. You have popular new family business, um, clean. So say if we go to clean, um, it'll show you an example of what that looks like. Um, choose the style. Oh, and then music, you can change it, whatever music you want. Um, So you use that one and then you can hit finish um, you can add in um, a logo you can add in titles as well um, and it will automatically you know I'm gonna go back you can go in here and add in text oh sorry you can add in text um, overlays to it as well like we have done here I'm just want to see if I can find here's another one that I made recently for a girl that does um, Botox or not, um, aesthetic, sorry, I'm not both. give you a little bit of insight as to what you can expect when you come to the clinic for a consultation. There are many treatments that we, we offer. We have the logo in the corner. The name would be dermal fillers, and we use that for the correction of fat pad loss. Um, when I'm assessing your face, I will make sure to generalize. So just very quickly, we'll so you can add in text you. along the bottom. So we go ahead and this is a slightly longer one because it's an introduction to the whole business. Okay, so again, like I said, I'm not um um I I'm not a video expert, but I shot that on my phone and I oh. Can you still see me? We can see you, yeah. Okay, oh, can you see the slides? I just opened yeah. Oh, sorry, I'll open this up. Well, yeah? It, it looks so, like canvas a bit. Pardon? It looks like canvas. Yeah, it does look like Canva actually. I love Canva as well. Um, yeah, it does, it, it's, it's very easy to use. Um, 
anytime I'm shooting video content, if anybody wants to do video content whilst they are in isolation, if you are um, looking to do anything, shoot everything this way, shoot everything landscape, okay? Because people tend to shoot, people tend to shoot video um, in a portrait mode and then when you go to edit it, um, there's gaps at the side. So anything you're ever shooting, shoot it in, in a landscape mode and um, it will look far better. So that there, um, Magisto, um, is, is great for that. The free version is just as good, but I wanted to be able to add in um, the logo and I think that's a paid for version. That's a paid for version uh, along with other extras. So another one that people like to use, I don't use it personally because um, you can't use it on the computer, um, is InShot. Does anybody use InShot? Um, well, InShot is a powerful um, screen video making and trimmer tool. It's it's um, an edit and it has loads of features, um, really good, really good features actually that I wish that I had on the other platform, but I don't. Um, you can add on stickers, you can flip and rotate, you can speed up videos, um, you can slow videos down and it's brilliant, but I don't use it um, because I just prefer to use the other, um, the other platform. So... Um, but I think that um, is, I'll have, I'll have time now if, you, if anybody has any questions. So I'm